Since torsional rotation is a change in three-dimensional structure, in order for chemists to represent these kinds of conformational changes, it's important that they're able to draw molecules with some three-dimensionality to them. Three ways the chemists show the three-dimensionality of molecular structure are the perspective view, the sawhorse view, and the Newman projection. We've seen the perspective view before. Sometimes it's called the planar zigzag form because of this zigzag nature. And the atoms that are in the plane are represented by normal weighted bonds. And then we use wedges and dashes to represent bonds coming out and going back. In the sawhorse view, what we're going to do is take this carbon-carbon bond and tilt or cant it slightly so that we have one group of atoms coming out toward us and a second group of atoms heading into the plane of, screen, of the screen. In the Newman projection, we're going to position our eye out in front. This is supposed to represent our eye. It's positioned along the carbon-carbon bond that undergoes rotation. And so what our eye sees first is this carbon atom and the three substituents that are attached to it. The carbon atom is represented by this filled green circle, and it's, at the, it's centered at the vertex of where these three bonds meet. The three substituents, the hydrogen on top, hydrogen down and to the right, and the third hydrogen down and to the left, are drawn to the carbon with a, fully, a full length bond. The substituents in the back, however, have truncated bonds because we can't see them. For example, the carbon-bromine bond is drawn as a truncated line up to the point of that circle because that carbon atom in front blocks the view, the remaining view, of this, the full length of this carbon-bromine bond. The relationship between these three views is best seen with some molecular models. In the perspective view, we'll rotate the molecule so that the carbon atoms and bromine lie in the plane of the screen. The sawhorse view is tilted slightly, one group of atoms coming out toward us, the second group heading to the back. In the Newman projection, we'll position our eye along the line of sight that's directed down the carbon-carbon bond axis. And when we orient it that way, what we see are the three substituents, the three hydrogen atoms coming out toward us, and then in the back are the bromine and the other two hydrogen atoms. The three views on the left represent what's known as the staggered conformation. The three views on the right represent what's known as the eclipsed conformation. The relationship between these two involves a 60 degree torsional rotation about the carbon-carbon bond. So if we take, for example, this carbon-bromine bond, which was initially in the plane of the screen, upon 60 degree rotation, corresponds to a carbon-bromine bond that's heading behind the plane of the screen. This hydrogen atom, it's coming out toward us, up and to the right. After rotation, it's still coming out toward us, but now it's down and to the right. This carbon-hydrogen bond was behind the plane of the screen, but upon rotation by 60 degrees, that carbon-hydrogen bond is now positioned in the plane of the screen. And so we can see that in the eclipse conformation, the two hydrogens that are in a cis relationship to one another are also eclipsing or in the same plane as one another. Whereas in the staggered conformation, those hydrogen atoms are not in the same plane. We can see this clearly from the Newman projection, the carbon-hydrogen bond that's coming out toward us, bisects the carbon-hydrogen bonds that are behind it. Whereas in the eclipsed conformation, all of these carbon-hydrogen bonds lie in, on top of one another. This carbon-hydrogen bond is on top of the carbon-bromine bond in back. In the next webcast, we'll take a look at how the molecular energy changes upon torsional rotation.